Okay. Let's start with what ought to have been in the bill, what should have been there. First of all, no question, this should have been a bipartisan bill. No question about it. Go back to that John Chafee, Bob Dole bill in 93. It is very close to what we just passed. Why wasn't it bipartisan? Well, I'll leave you to some time in the bar to work out who shot John, but I'll just say this. Kennedy's illness was a tragedy here because he and Orrin Hatch have a very, had a very close personal relationship and I know from their age they talked every day as long as Kennedy could. And every day after that conversation they told their age to work this out. And when that conversation could no longer happen because Kennedy's family felt compelled to cut it off, Hatch was hurt that he was not considered close enough to keep talking. And hurt turned to anger as hurt will and Baucus couldn't handle the anger. So off we went. We didn't get malpractice, and we should have. We didn't get SGR fix, and we should have. We didn't talk about advanced illness care because it became death panels, and we should have. Therefore, all of these are things we got to do going forward. Second, who's going to treat these people? We should have had very serious loan forgiveness and encouragements to become primary care clinicians of all forms. And that, got, and that got lost on the bar of deficit politics when it became impossible to spend more than a trillion. Let me ask you a question. If you're going to spend a trillion, why not spend a trillion two? Do it right. It's not like Mitch McConnell's going to like it better. It's because it's a trillion as opposed to a trillion two. But anyway, that became, that's what happened. Okay, so here's what's there. And I will say this at the beginning. What, what this bill is mostly about in the, in the insurance part changing the balance of power. It is requiring more transparency than insurers are used to, and that makes them nervous. You need to be gentle with our brethren there in the insurance industry. They're nervous right now. But it is not, in my opinion, a government takeover. A government takeover is not 2,000 pages. A government takeover is two lines. You're all in Medicare, it starts in January. 2,000 pages is about trying to take a whole bunch of ideas and fit them into a very complicated Byzantine system without upsetting anything more than you have to. And what the big thing, the big crowbar here is forcing insurers to be more transparent about what they're doing. Also, there's some pretty important, relatively small impacts in the aggregate, but hugely important for particular families. If you're someone who can't buy insurance, I can't tell you how many people drive me to and from these hotels around the country who don't have health insurance. I've taught a lot of people about the high risk pool in the cab. And so that's a big deal for them. And the truth is, anybody tells you different than their line, premiums are going to go up in the short run. You can't cover 26 year olds for free. You can't end lifetime limits. You can't have no pre-ex for kids. You can't have this stuff without it costing money. It will not cost as much as some people are telling you. But serious actuaries tell me one to five percent. It's real. So it's a real hit going in. Let's be careful about that. Now, big thing, Medicaid, big expansion. Huge expansion in lots of states. So the feds promised to pay for most, all of it at the beginning and most of it over time, but it's still going to be a lot of people. 27 to 39 percent more enrollees in Medicaid. And by the way, that's going to require states to spend between one and a half and three percent more than baseline. Now the Fed spend a whole lot more, but let me tell you, that's a big lift for states. Sorry, it's a big lift for states. What am I doing wrong here? It's a big lift for states to have to raise that money in a time when their economies are tough. So do not, do not underestimate the size of that request we're making of them. So then insurance reforms is really about creating a new marketplace, that's what an exchange is, for the parts of our market that don't work very well, non-group and small group. Essentially it's about extending the risk pool and administrative economies of scale to all Americans that are currently present for those of us who happen to work for big firms. That's really what it's about. And that of course requires that you say to insurers you have to take all comers, you have to change the business model to take all comers. But you can't tell insurers you got to take all comers unless everybody comes. Otherwise, you're forcing them to take a risk pool that is not sustainable. And if we've learned nothing from the good sisters, we have to learn stewardship. 
So we've got to make it sustainable. So we've got to have a requirement that everybody buys. So the individual mandate is not some plot to put the jackboot of federal tyranny on the neck of those boys up in trees in Idaho. It is really about trying to make private insurance markets work with rules that serve us all.